Tim Burton is one of the most notable directors, writers, and producers in the world today. His style is incredibly unique and distinctive. You can spot one of his movies from a mile away, and his catalog includes offerings ranging from Beetlejuice and Edward Scissorhands to Corpse Bride and Frankenweenie. Intriguingly, some fans have theorized that all of Burton's original movies are connected and do in fact exist in the same universe. In this video, we'll delve deeper into that theory. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It's the best way to keep up to date with all our great new videos. During the video, can you count how many times Beetlejuice randomly appears? Stick around until the end to find out if you counted correctly. <laughs> In a recent video on this very channel, we discussed a number of theories that linked animated movies to live action movies. One of those talked about the fact that all of Tim Burton's original movies, both animated and live action, are theorized to be connected, and all take place in the same universe. The comments you wrote underneath the video suggested that you guys want to hear more about this theory. Yes, answers. I need answers! Well, you asked, and now we're delivering. Because that's just the kind of lovely people we are. Before we begin, please note that we are referring to Burton's original movies here. So don't expect to hear anything about the likes of the Batman movies, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Alice in Wonderland, or Planet of the Apes being discussed. It's showtime! Let's begin. The theory kicks off with 1982's short movie Vincent, which was Burton's first ever stop motion offering. Specifically, the theory starts with the dog from the movie, whose name was Abercrombie. It suggests that Vincent's mom gave Abercrombie away to save him from being used in Vincent's experiments, and that he ended up being adopted by Victor from 2012's Frankenweenie and renamed Sparky. That's a nice simple start, right? Well, the theory continues. In the same 1982 movie, Vincent dug up a woman that he believed to be his wife, and this theory suggests that the woman moved on to the spirit world, otherwise known as Halloween Town in 1993's The Nightmare Before Christmas and renamed herself Sally. Disclaimer, we know Tim Burton produced The Nightmare Before Christmas rather than directed it, but it's still very much considered to be one of his movies. Again, looking at Sally and the woman Vincent dug up, this actually makes perfect sense, given how similar their appearances are. There are so many things I cannot grasp. So, hopefully you're keeping up with the theory so far. It also suggests that the aforementioned dog Sparky died and moved to that same spirit world, becoming Jack Skellington's dog Zero. In fact, eagle-eyed fans have supposedly spotted Zero's grave in Frankenweenie, creating another link. But that's not something we can claim to have seen. Sticking with both Frankenweenie and The Nightmare Before Christmas, we now come to Edgar Gore, Victor's laboratory partner from the former of those two movies. He's alive! For the purpose of this theory, let's imagine he died in a tragic lab accident following the events of Frankenweenie, and, and then that he re-emerged in the afterlife of Halloween Town. Because he definitely looks like Dr. Finkelstein's assistant in The Nightmare Before Christmas. You know, the hunchback character who helped him create the skeletal reindeer? Both characters have three teeth, two of which are on the left side of their mouths and one of which is on the right. Excellent, Igor. Surely that can't be a mere coincidence. You can also see Bob from Frank and Weenie in The Nightmare Before Christmas. He's one of the many people forced to flee in fear when Jack Skellington's Halloween-themed gifts start attacking the town's citizens. I have a special present for you, anyway. Now, remember Sparky, the dog we spoke about earlier? Well, this theory suggests that when he died, Victor's parents saw how miserable he was and bought him a new one of the same breed, Scraps. You know, the dog from 2005's Corpse Bride? Scraps? <laughs> And that's because the theory suggests that Victor from Frankenweenie is the same Victor seen in The Corpse Bride. When Scraps died unable to handle the death of a second beloved pet, Victor ran away from home and eventually found a new home with the Van Dorts. They have the same name, they look the same, and they have similar looking dogs. This part of the theory certainly makes a lot of sense. After him! Kill the monster! Now let's quickly look at Mr. Burgermeister from Corpse Bride and Finnis Everglot from Frankenweenie. Well, hello. Their appearances are practically identical to each other, so this theory suggests that they could quite easily be brothers, perhaps even twins. We shall continue as planned, with or without Vincent. Victor. Whatever. The next part of the theory is the first to include one of Tim Burton's live-action movies. It involves Victor's neighbor Elsa Van Helsing from Frankenweenie. My niece, Elsa Van Helsing. 
It's suggested that Elsa slipped into a deep depressive state when Victor ran away and, when her parents couldn't help her, she was given up for adoption and grew up to be the extremely morbid Lydia Dietz. Delia and Charles Dietz's daughter, who was played by Winona Ryder in the iconic 1989 movie Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice? Yes, that's it! There's an additional adoption-based theory that Weird Girl from Frank and Weenie was also given away by her parents, who believed she was going crazy when she tried to explain what happened to her beloved Mr. Whiskers. Mr. Whiskers had a dream about you last night. And she became Kim, who was another character played by Winona Ryder from 1990's Edward Scissorhands. There's also a suggestion that when Victor died, he moved on to the spirit world of Halloween Town and became Jack Skellington. Who knows? Sadly, there's really no basis for that part of the theory. It came from a random YouTube account, but it has widely been accepted as being believable enough to be added to it. As crazy as it might sound. What do you mean? That's not true. You're probably thinking to yourselves, how can the likes of Johnny Depp, Catherine O'Hara, and Winona Ryder play or voice so many characters in so many of these movies if they're all set in the same universe? Well, they're working for the Watchers of the Tim Burton-verse, in the same way Stan Lee does in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay, we totally made that up, but it's a fun idea, right? Why are you doing this? Right? Anyway, that's the theory. It's hard to believe that Tim Burton elaborately plotted all that over the course of more than 30 years, but it's definitely cool to believe it might be true. And that's the end of our video. Did you enjoy it? Are you convinced by the theory that Tim Burton's movies all take place in the same universe? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more great videos like this one. Oh, and the number of times Beetlejuice randomly appeared was... Hope you had fun counting. Bye for now.